Hi, you clicked on this link because you want to know how to take a lateral chest x-ray perfectly every time. And I'm going to show you what works for me. Here we are looking at a lateral chest x-ray. If you go on the assumption that the ribs need to be superimposed, then this is a correct chest x-ray. You can see the right and the left ribs only form one set of ribs. Unfortunately, sometimes our chest x-rays turn out like this. And you can tell that the ribs are not superimposed because you can see two sets there. So you're asking yourself, how can I go from there to here? And this is how you do it. First, you have to understand how the room is set up. Here's the tube, here's the central ray, and the divergent beams here. Here's the receptor. The central ray is coming straight out at 90 degrees, hitting the receptor. Every other angle that's coming out of here is not hitting it at 90 degrees and will need to be adjusted in about a minute. Here's our patient with the spine, back of the ribs, front of the ribs, abdomens up in front. We line up the patient for a PA view and we want the spine and the sternum to be superimposed upon each other. And that will happen because the central ray is coming right through both of them. The divergence that's experienced on a PHS x-ray is not that important. Now you line it up for a lateral chest x-ray and you're told that you need to go exactly 90 degrees so the ribs are superimposed. So you line it up over here and if you look at the left rib and the right rib, you'll realize they both reside on the central ray. And that means that when the exposure is made, the right and the left are going to be superimposed upon each other, which is good. But if you notice here, we're only using the front half of the bucky. We're not using anything in the back. And you can't do that. So you have to shoot right down the middle here and make sure that there's equal distance on each side. If you do that and you do it at 90 degrees, you will fail, and this is why. You take the imaginary line that comes from the back of the ribs and you project it all the way out, and you will realize that it doesn't hit the tube. It doesn't come across to the center here. Why is that important? That's important because when the divergent beam is coming out and it's striking this rib, it's gonna cast a shadow right here that line is. Now the divergent beam comes out again and it strikes this rib, it's going to create a different shadow which is right there. So you're dealing with the close rib and the far away rib. And that that's going to cause your soup that's going to cause your non super in position. So the way we get it from this view in so into a view that doesn't superimpose the ribs is by angling the patient a little bit. In this case, you angle them about this much. You want to have that imaginary line go straight to the center of the tube. That way, when it comes out and it hits this rib, it's also going to graze this rib and cause one spot on the, on the film, which is right there. This is an example of a 90 degrees where you're going right down the center and you can see the line in the back, it's going straight out and missing the tube completely. So again, just another example, different example. Here's how you wanna have it in the, final, in the final position, you wanna have it like that. And what I'm trying to say in this picture is it doesn't matter where you position the patient, as long as the two ribs line up, you're fine. You can angle it way up there too if you wish and you'll still get both of the rib x-rays arriving at one point. Let me show you a, just a little brief example of what I'm talking about here. So here's a glove box, the spinous process, posterior ribs. They're represented with a paper clip that's right here and that's going to be evident in a minute because I'm going to show you the divergence with light. So if we line it up to the bucky and we put it right down the middle of the bucky and then turn the light on, we'll see that both the left and the right, we're looking at the left one now, both the left and the right paper clips line up on each other. And that's exactly what we want. We want them to line up, but we don't position the patient just on that anterior side. We position the patient on both sides. So in reality, for this example, we're gonna move the patient back a little bit. We're gonna assume that the back of them is over there and that the front of them is over here. 
So now when you look at this x-ray, or when you look at this patient, you will see that there are two rib shadows. One is the right and the other one is the left. And that's caused because of the divergence. As we go back and forth here at a 90 degree angle, you will see that right rib paperclip superimpose and then jump out in front, superimpose and then jump out in back. Now that's gonna happen every single time you have 90 degrees here. So that's why I'm saying the book is not quite accurate. The slight angle, which is about this much that you can see, that's all you need. That'll give the imaginary beam time to go up and either hit the side or hit the center. So we'll do it again. There's the light and we're moving it forward slightly so we can get some superimposition. Now it's superimposed and in front. We're angling back, which we would never do. Superimposed again and there you go. So this is how I do chest x-rays for my lateral view and I think it works pretty darn well. If you think this is a good video, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And also, don't forget to share this if it has helped you. Thanks again, and this is how to take a lateral chest x-ray perfectly every time.